When you hear the words Witherling's famous son, you may think of multi-million dollar lounge rock fusion artist Frankie G or Nick Jackson. But there's another Witherlinger who lurks, if you will, further underground, producer of such cult, or as some would say, not very well known films as Bit Slasher, Bit Slasher 2, Bit Slasher 3 and 4, numbers 6 to 12 of the Nunfucker franchise and critically acclaimed genre crossover piece Bitchfucker. Nick Vertigo, schlock horror extraordinaire, agreed to a sit-down interview about his most eagerly anticipated film yet, Bitch Slasher 4. <clears throat> that's, uh, that's five. I've got four here. Yeah, you said four before. Four before? Oh, wait. Ah, yes, so I did. Well, it's Bitch Slasher 5, but it's the sixth film in the Bitch Slasher saga. The second was Bitch Slasher 1. How is the second Bitch Slasher 1? Well, it goes Bitch Slasher then Bitch Slasher 1, and then Bitch Slasher 2. So the first film was just Bitch Slasher, then the second was Bitch Slasher 1, then the third being Bitch Slasher 2, and so on and so on and so forth. Yeah, exactly. Hmm. Okay, right, well, on with the interview. Tell me a bit more about the Bitch Slasher saga. Well, Pete, the, uh, the Bitch Slasher saga, it's... Sorry. Let me stop you one second. That chair you're sitting on, it really is something else. What, this? The Verti Throne? I've got to describe this to you listeners. He's got an oversized office swivel chair and stuck two plastic skulls on the armrests. Genius. Anyway, sorry, please continue. Well, you see, I've always been pro-war. Pro-war? Pro-war, yeah. And the bitch slash a saga as a corollary illustrates how through strife, suffering and gratuitous violence, great beauty can emerge counter to and in fact, you know, directly opposed to the predominant cultural zeitgeist. That's not the same film I watched. I have here an audio recording of the film and I must warn listeners of a sensitive disposition that the following makes for hard listening. <laughs> Your chance. No, I need them. Degenerate. <laughs> Hello. Do you have a minute to speak about Jesus? Yes, please come in. Sorry about the mess. I was just slashing a bit. Oh, we see that a lot. Help me! Would you like a leaflet? Which denomination did you say you were from again? I'm a Catholic. We're all brothers in Christ. I'm a Protestant. <laughs> It sounds to me like you've just deliberately filmed the most offensive content you possibly could, then backtracked over it with some art school waffle in order to not only justify it in your own sick head, but also try and give it some vague form of artistic credibility. No, 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 no. The boobs in this scene, they represent foreign territory seized under neo-colonial foreign policy. Neo-colonial foreign policy? Yeah. That doesn't even make sense. Is your whole life just a series of pathetic pathos-laced metaphors to justify your sordid little existence? When you go for a shit, are you really highlighting the plight of the diaspora of the Asian boat people? Hey, that's a good one. No, don't write that down. It's ludicrous. I'm getting some inspiration right now. Um, a toilet bowl. Downtown New York. Cigarette smoke. Neon lights. No, stop it! A woman getting stabbed in the buttocks by a midget. Oh, this could be the inspiration for Bitch Slasher 6 that I've been searching for these past months. This isn't how movies are supposed to be made. They're precious, delicate creatures. This is just shit. Solid, gold, metaphor-laced shit. Do you like margaritas, Pete? Margaritas? Um... That's the spirit, Pete. Come with me. There could be an executive producer credit in this for you. <laughs> 